boredom is surprisingly a major problem that modern people have to endure due to how negatively it can affect us, yet these effects rarely being noticed. Studies have shown that people who regularly experience boredom can result to sadistic social activities like bullying, most likely from wanting a tinge of excitement and thrill. This can be either harming others or self-harm. Boredom can also lead people to political extremism. Humans can easily lose a part of their sanity by being bored, and results to acting or wanting antisocial occurrence. I have to say though that this is certainly not a desirable nor productive way to spend time. So in this video, I'll discuss how to escape the feeling of boredom and if not, how to use that feeling productively. In this channel, you'll be able to learn about these interesting science and psychology that can greatly change your lives for the better, as I'll introduce it by using scientific and scholarly articles. So if you want to learn more about these life-changing scientific and psychological information, then please make sure to show support by subscribing subscribing to Life Study Library, liking this video, and sharing to others that this channel exists. Your support is greatly, greatly appreciated. And now, back to the video. In this video, I'll introduce 5 scientifically proven strategies to benefit from boredom. Strategy 1 is use boredom to improve creativity. The study was done at the University of Central Lancashire in 2014, and it is said that the feeling of boredom promotes creativity in people. Participants were tasked to either do a writing activity or copy down a bunch of numbers from a phone book, and the two groups were both then assigned a creativity test. Results showed that the group who did the more mundane task, copying down phone numbers, performed better in the creativity test compared to the group who participated in a writing activity. This not only demonstrates the significance of the need for a mundane crouching before you can fully blast yourself away into creativity, but also adds on to the idea that creativity is a finite resource. Becoming creative to come up with novel ideas or answers requires your cognitive power, which is a fuel that depletes over time, and thus needs some downtime before you can become creative again. This finding suggests that boredom is, in itself, an important part of the strategy to increase creativity. So I want to emphasize that there is absolutely no need to feel guilty about becoming bored or fatigued for that matter. Strategy number two is reevaluating the source of boredom. This is a study done at the University of Constance in Germany, which sampled 976 students and made them attend a boring class and divided their response into three groups. The first group was provided an idea to reevaluate the materials that was taught in the class and were tasked to think about how the materials can be used in their future. They thought about, for example, how learning calculus can benefit them in the future and essentially change their perspective on the material that was given to them in order to find meaning in learning that subject and escape boredom. The second group was tasked to combat boredom by insisting the instructor to teach in a more fun style. Third group escaped boredom by mind wandering and by thinking about other more fun stuff. Afterward, the sample's overall level of motivation to learn the subject was measured, and the results showed that the group that re-evaluated the material saw the best result, along with the most enjoyment to learn the subject and the decrease of overall negative emotions like anxiety. Additionally, this significant improvement was only apparent in the re-evaluating group. The point you should get is that boredom is, again, an opportunity for you to find something interesting, and it would be much more productive for you to actively look for it and think about what you can add or change about the current situation. Strategy number three is applying self-compassion. By this point, I don't think I need to explain the basic principles of self-compassion, so if this concept is new to you, then you can go learn about it by watching these videos that I recommend. This study specifically focused on the dispositional self-compassion, having the personality to be compassionate towards yourself, and also conditional self-compassion, whether or not you currently have a high level of self-compassion. The result had a consistent pattern, as the higher your self-compassion level got, the lower level of boredom you felt. It showed that the better you can perform self-compassion, the better you become at finding and having a sense of purpose to what you do and your overall life. Therefore, you are less likely to feel bored because you'll have more time in your day to live with a purpose. This ties in with the concept of mindfulness, a mental state where you focus on the present moment, which is much easier to reach if you practice self-compassion. Strategy number four is 
becoming religious. This was very surprising, but made sense after reading about it. According to a study published on the journal Emotion on 2019, the higher a person's religious spirit is, the less level of boredom they'll feel. The study looked at about 1,500 people and surveyed them about what kind of religions they believe in and compared their answers to the level of boredom they feel in their daily lives. Apparently, people with various religions were surveyed, including Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, and even atheists and non-believers. These people were surveyed for their overall life satisfaction regarding boredom. The results showed two things. Believers of any religion tend to feel boredom less frequently and intensely compared to non-believers or atheists. And these non-believers or atheists particularly felt more boredom compared to believers when doing a boring task. The researchers have analyzed that it's in our innate human nature to crave for excitement or meaning or a sense of purpose or pretty much any synonym of those words because we often feel some level of mundanity in our regular lives. Therefore, any activity, even besides religion, that fulfills this need are just as effective of making them feel more enjoyment out of their lives. Now, I will emphasize that we have plenty of other activities that have similar benefits. Activities like work, school, play, platonic and romantic relationships, family. All these activities and connections that we usually put all of our attention to when interacting with. But it's also true that we also need to have a specific environment and timing prepared for us in order to fully enjoy their company. When you're in a work meeting or in a class taking your finals, you most likely do not want your parents calling you to talk about your day. However, participating in some religious or ritualistic habits, even simply closing your eyes and praying, can be done pretty much anywhere, anytime. I am not knowledgeable of every single religion that exists in the world, but anything that involves some kind of a connection or a guidance from a higher being can totally help us find meaning in our daily and overall lives. Strategy number five is avoiding your smartphone. According to a study done in 2021 at Radboud University in the Netherlands, using your smartphone when you're already bored increases your feeling of boredom. Now, I agree that smartphone usage and your overall success in life is a contentious topic indeed, so this study specifically focused on the smartphone usage when you're already feeling bored. It sampled business employees, so despite the relatively small sample size, the overall study should apply to a much greater audience. What the researchers did was that they monitored monitored the samples and their usage rate of their smartphones, and every hour for three business days rated their levels of fatigue and boredom. The study found two things. One, the more boredom these employees felt, the more they used their phones. Two, the more time they spent on their phones, the more bored they got. So the general conclusion to this whole shebang is that those who frequently run to smartphones when feeling bored, the best bet is to avoid it or, at the very least, find another activity to do. Smartphone usage when you're already feeling bored will not be a source of entertainment that'll satisfy you and will only become an item that wastes further time of yours. Perhaps some of my older viewers have already noticed, but these strategies all have to do with being mindful of your current actions, so being fully present and not being in a distracted state. In strategy 1, you have to fully observe your current environment intentionally in order to become creative and come up with ideas. Strategy 2 requires you to reinterpret your boring environment, which will most definitely make you focus in creative ways. In strategy 3, you have to fully focus on yourself in order to perform self-compassion. And 4 and 5 are opportunities for you to focus intently on one activity while ignoring distracting others. These are all common in the sense that they all require some level of concentration and you can hone the skill by practicing the flow technique. The flow is basically a state in which you enter a hyper-focused state and become present in nothing else but the activity you're doing right now. You might have experienced a moment when you lost track of your time because you were so focused and once you stopped to look at your work, you've done so much in so little time. That's exactly the state of flow. And I made a video talking about some important pointers to keep in mind when performing this. The video is called, What is Flow? Finding your ideal environment to concentrate and perform. The link is in the description, so go check it out if you're interested. Now, a book I want to mention is Creative Thinkering. 
putting your imagination to work by Michael Michalko. Like how I explained in point one, the feeling of boredom is a really good opportunity to promote creativity to improve your environment. The book talks about people like Da Vinci or Edison or Einstein how these people use creativity to greatly change the world. And it's a really interesting book not only for people like inventors or business people, but can also be applied to your individual private lives. So you should definitely take a look at it. I've been Lai Yosh, I'll see you in another video, bye!